Okay, a very good morning to all. Welcome to the uh, Insight Webinar Series for the title Empowering Industry for with Smart Vision. So this seminar is actually organized uh, jointly by ICEC, MMU, and also the Center for Visual Computing, uh, Faculty of Computing and Informatics Multimedia University. So we know that today, Industrial 4 is a buzzword, it's a cash word. We heard a lot about words like Internet of Things, all right, Smart Factory, Big Data, Digital Twin, Artificial Intelligence, all right? And all this actually uh, describes all right, uh, how smart vision is actually slowly gaining in way, its way into smart manufacturing. And uh, today we have with us all right, um, two experts in the area of uh, smart vision. Um, Mr. Is Lau Zewing from Vidros Corporation, Brahat. Vidros is one of the pioneers in smart vision all right, in Malaysia and it has started from a uh, company with a few person into now near to a thousand employees all right and it's actually serving international markets as well and uh he will share with us all right how the industry uh smart vision is actually being deployed into industry to improve productivity productivity as well as um the uh automation and so on and in addition to that we also have a uh, Dr. Lo Yuan Ping, all right, a lecturer with the Faculty of Computing and Informatics, and he will share her uh, research, all right, which is uh, very much in line, all right, with uh, improving the AI technology in the industry. So let me first give you an introduction, all right, a brief uh, biography of both our speakers today. So Mr. Ace Lauzevi received his um, BIT degree in software engineering with first class honors from MMU. So he's actually an alumni of Multimedia University and he's currently a senior R&D engineer in Vidros and has been with Vidros for nine years. After gaining three years of uh, machine vision knowledge in the backend R&D industry in Vidros Center of Excellence, Ixlau is currently with the front end business unit for the past six years and he actively involved in developing machine vision application software in the Vidras Cray based machine vision. Notably, he's also a machine vision trainer who has conducted more than 150 hours of training on machine vision, all right, which include machine vision fundamentals, image acquisition, and digital image processing. And next, I'd like to introduce you to Dr. Lo Yuan Ping, a lecturer at the Faculty of Computing and Informatics Multimedia University. In year 2019, uh, Dr. Law received a PhD degree from the Faculty of Computer Science and Information Technology University in Malaysia. And prior to that, in the year of 2013, she received a Bachelor of Degree in Mechatronic uh, Engineering with Honors in UCSI University. Her specialization is in the area of computer vision, all right, smart vision, image processing, and deep learning. She's currently a member of the Board of Engineers Malaysia, an executive committee member of the IEEE Computational Intelligence Society Malaysia chapter, as well as an editor in, for the IEEE Consumer Technology Society News on Consumer Technology Online Publication. Dr. Law also serves as organizing committee for reputable conference like the IEEE International Conference of Image Processing for the, uh, in 2023, and she is also the technical program committee for uh, various well-known conferences, including IEEE, ICME, IEEE ESPETS, and IEEE TW. And in addition, she serves as a reviewer for several reputable journals, such as IEEE Transitions on Image Processing and IEEE Signal Processing Letters. So without further ado, I now pass all right, the floor over to Total Law to share her experience and research all right, on how the uh, smart vision can be used to empower industry. Or over to you, Total Law. Thank you very much, Dr. Wong, for the kind introduction. 
So, and also for this opportunity to do some sharing. A uh, very good morning to everyone. So, I'm Lo Yunping from the Faculty of Computing and Informatics, Multimedia University, Cyberjaya. Okay. So, this is a brief outline of my sharing. So, I will introduce a bit about uh, introduce, uh, Industry 4.0 and Smart Vision, then briefly some key distinctions about Smart Vision uh, technology trends and also followed by some challenges, especially in the context of my research work. So to start off, uh, industrial revolution refers to a period of advancement that uh, transformed the way we live and work. So throughout modern history, there have been three eras marked by specific technological progress, such as the change of production from people to machine processors, industrial mass production, IT and automation, and now on the fourth era, uh, there are many range of technologies that seek to enable and blend our physical, biological world with the digital world. So smart vision is one of such technological uh, advancement that changes many aspects of our lives from our private spaces to even professional careers and many industrial uh, advancements there. So from that, to be specific, uh, smart vision okay, refers to uh, systems that interpret, understand and operate on visual data. So in this, we have many areas of application, such as large scale applications in factories through machine vision. Where in production lines, we may use this type of uh, vision for let's say QC checking or any other support processes or until to more publicly accessible system such as autonomously driven cars or even various functions on your mobile phones. So we actually have quite a few of these systems already in the market and many of us have already have a touch in it. Right? So these type of systems are actually enabled by technologies like uh, computer vision, image processing, AI, and more. So some of you may have heard of uh, these few keywords in various uh, products and also various news reports or even articles. So I'm going to go to provide a bit of distinction for these few key concepts. All right, to start off regarding image processing and computer vision. All right, so fundamentally, we can actually differentiate image processing and computer vision. So to start off, uh, image processing specifically handles the manipulation or enhancement of images. So in our early systems or even earlier digital progresses, uh, we are doing enhancements, improvement of, let's say, aesthetics or brightening of images. Right, so mostly is for our observation. Then for more recently, the interest would be in computer vision, which refers to the analysis and understanding of image content. So uh, systems for object detection, understanding scene, right, and even tracking. So we may have this type of distinction, but very often the systems actually merge where one may support the other. Image processing may support better computer vision. Computer vision may support to have better enhancement. So the next few concepts here is AI and deep learning. So also commonly seen recently. All right. So AI refers to uh, imbuing systems like computers with intelligence. So inside artificial intelligence, we have different uh, categories of it as well. So deep learning is particularly popular, especially to handle such complicated uh, data like image, all right? So for having AI, we very often refer to artificial neural networks where we try to mimic our brain processes. So this is only one approach, which is very popular in any smart systems recently. So for even more complex problems, we will go for deep neural networks. So where we try to learn hierarchy of concepts. So we design neural networks to learn how humans see things so that the computer can see it as well. So convolutional neural network is one of the popular categories of this, especially for 
vision related process. So for here, just to illustrate, right? This is typically what we design when we say we want to have deep neural networks or specifically the CNN category to do image processing and computer vision. So you can see blocks and layers. That's how we design computer models to actually learn hierarchies from edges to body parts to our face and even our identity. So you may notice a bit of similarity between image processing and computer vision. So a smart system depends on how we want to design uh, this type of models. So for the current trends, why those models or deep learning that you heard of become so popular? Part of the reason is uh, having very powerful machines now, like graphical processing units. We have parallel processing, uh, graphic cards that you use, right? And also cloud services in order to access and train models, teach a computer to do all these smart vision tasks. And the next reason is the data. We have increasingly more data nowadays. We keep generating uh, terabytes of data even per second per day. All right? And also there are a lot more annotations, basically labeling uh, the data to teach models. All of these now are very publicly available. There are up to millions of image data, which has contributed to this type of advancement. So despite so, right, there are still many challenging uh, conditions where we have to handle. All those aforementioned public uh, data sets or even a lot of applications are mostly in visual, visually bright conditions. Contents are very clear. We can see whether it's a train or a dog or a cat and so on. All right. So there are still many other environments that the real world consists of. So part of my research actually uh, handles this type of challenging environment, specifically like nighttime. All right. So in such case, there are significantly less public data and it's also a lot more challenging to collect. Because it's not often that we take a photo for nighttime. So if you want to have large data in order to train a machine, that may not be very possible. Okay, we can't really go online to do, let's say, image crawling and all those current large data sets only have very minimum ratio, many minimum amount of such data there. So in cases where we start asking, what can we do if we have lack of data? So one common practice that you may have heard of, collect more data. So it is a very tedious and time consuming effort, not only in cases, let's say nighttime. Many of the in industry perhaps that when you want to do uh, some sort of model training, then the data collection aspect is very tedious. It takes uh, people, it takes the time, which may not be that helpful if we are trying to go for advancing into industry 4.0. So the next option that uh, commonly taken is using data augmentation, where we try to modify our current data so that we can increase the amount with some little variation. The effectiveness of such approach may be very dependent that what sort of modification we are doing, is it suitable for the data itself? So the way that I would normally approach my research would be going back to understanding the problem. All right. So in the context, let's say in the this nighttime type of systems, all right, objects, they are still the same. A bicycle is still a bicycle in daytime or in nighttime. All right. So what exactly is the problem? We can't collect more data or it's not easy to do that. What else can we do? So fundamentally in nighttime, the problem is lack of details, or sometimes we call that features. We can't see the content inside. So if people can't see, very often machines may also have that difficulty. So that's where in order to have this smart nighttime low light vision, you want to close this gap, we can have other options. For instance, the image processing, or we can actually improve the model, the AI model instead. So to further show you, these are the common problems in nighttime. So we can hardly see what exactly is in the image. 
So if you just put a normal, even very advanced uh, computer vision or AI model, it may have difficulty trying to tell. So we can look about it in a different context where we enhance and brighten the images, then we can see what is the content. We can go further into analyzing and then doing the smart vision system. So in this case, solutions that I have would be in two type of options. First is the image enhancement as a pre-processing. Enhance the image, then detect it. So in this case, I can leverage on the very good models that we currently have that we can download from, let's say, online for testing, object detectors, trained on millions of bright data. We just have to support it using enhancement. We brighten the image so that it looks more similar to the bright daylight condition, and then it can perform. So in this way, we don't have to rely on keep collecting more nighttime data, which may take way too long to do. The other option is we can improve the model, improve the features. We have this approach called fusion. All right. So we're still using the enhancement, enhancement models there, extract the information from the enhancement and then provide it to the detection model in order to do the uh, object detection much better. So in this case, again, we don't have to rely on collecting more and more data. There's always the question of how much is enough. But knowing the problem, we can actually have it trying to close the gap between okay, the problem with the nighttime, how can we closer to the bright daytime, and then we can still leverage on the power that we have for cases where we have a lot of data. So this type of approach, there has been a bit of proven results there, where either way, we can actually improve the detection. Okay, so some of the objects may get missed out if we just provide it the nighttime image because essentially the computer cannot see, just like how we cannot see. But with the enhancement approach or even the fusion approach, we can retrieve back the missing details or missing objects and then provide a better detection. So this may be applicable in many different areas, not just nighttime. Because there are many challenging conditions, like uh, even in a factory, the lighting system okay, during the different day, different time, it may have an impact on performance. So some key takeaway. So our smart vision systems can pave the way for various transformation all right, towards Industry 4.0. But you might need to look into how to effectively do that. Conventional trends of problem solving where uh, we need to gather more data, we want to get more samples, may not all be practical for all cases. So we can look at it from a different perspective. Image processing can support computer vision or vice versa. Key point is we have to understand the problem in order to provide the uh, advancement, in order to get insights to go further. Okay, so that's all for my sharing. These are the a bit of references of the research work that I look into. So thank you very much. Uh, back to you, Dr. Wong. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Law, for the very insightful uh, sharing. All right, on the topic of uh, how smart vision can be employed in the industry, as well as sharing your very interesting research on low light enhancement. All right, that could be one of the technology that capacity or improve all right the uh smart vision technology further and next we'd like to invite uh, mr x lausery all right our industry speaker and our own mmu alumni all right a first class honor students to share all right his uh valuable uh knowledge and experience on how smart vision is actually deployed all right, in the industry, in line with the industry for revolution. So over to you, um, Mr. Itzlang. Okay. 
So thank you for the host of the day, Dr. Wong. I also my supervisor previously on my final year project. So good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Today, on behalf of Vitrox uh, Corporation Berhad, I would like to present to you a sharing entitled Empowering Industry 4.0 with Smart Pension Visions. First and foremost, let me briefly introduce the background of our company, which is Vitrox. Vitrox is a local technology company founded in 1998 by three engineers from USM, namely Chu Zheng Wing, Xiao Kok Tong, and Yoshi Hong. So they started with just 20K NYR of funding in a small bedroom. Their early days was uh, not so easy. They worked days and nights to get their first order fulfilled, which eventually shipped and buy off by customers. Since then, the team growing bigger and bigger and enjoy riding the wave of industrial automations Later on, steadily grows into a gro one of a leader in the global machine vision industry. So you can see the picture on the left. The picture above shows the very first uh, bedroom office. And picture below shows our current campus 2.0, which can house over thousands of employees. So our core business is providing an OEM, Original Equipment Manufacturing Machine Vision Solutions, to semiconductor manufacturing industries. Our range of products actually covered from back-end semiconductor, which is IC chips, to uh, more front-end PCB board inspections, and covered a wide range of industries. We also have an uh, electronic communication systems department, which design electronic controllers for machine parts integrations. Our company also provides a proprietary manufacturing intelligence solutions to help our customer to smarten their production line in this industrial 4.0 era. Recent years, the vertical farming has become a trend to solve world hunger and crops deprivation problem due to climate change. So our company also has started a new venture in smart precision farming by using visions and multiple sensors technologies uh, by establishing the Vitrox Agritech department. So some of the crops even being served in our free vegetarian lunch program, and it certainly tastes nice, okay? So besides doing business, Vitrox also promote the lifelong learning by establishing Vitrox Academy. It focuses on providing a highly industry-driven and relevant technical training program, and also corporate soft skill training in these fast-moving tech sectors. So it also serves as an R&D playground for researchers to spark future innovations. This is our Futures Campus 3.0, and it's set to be ready for operation by 2023. This campus can house more than double of our current capacities. Next is the, this will be our Founders 10 Years Expansion Master Plan, where you can see we are approaching our goals currently step-by-step step throughout the years. So this beautiful campus will certainly be another iconic landmark in Penang Patokawa industry zone, where most of the building are just cubicle factories. Now back to the topic, industrial 4.0 has become a hot trend in the industrial sectors nowadays, since introduced in 2011 by govern, uh, government of Germany. So in the following sessions, I will introduce to you all about what machine vision is and how it embraces the industry 4.0 to make manufacturing systems smarter. Machine vision gives the machine the eyes to understand our 3D world, either in control or uncontrolled environments. Control environment means uh, indoor, where lighting factors are in control, where uncontrolled means uh, outdoor situation where absence or presence of the ambient light will actually interfering the image acquisition results. Normally, the digital eyes are given by utilizing the camera packed with a vision sensor or optical sensor to capture the digital image. And computerized decision making is then done by extracting useful information from the acquired digital image. It is commonly used in manufacturing industry for quality inspections impact finding, as well as data collections to make robotic system more efficient. So machine vision is introduced in factory automation for a main purpose, 
which is replacing low skill workers where their task is repetitive. This includes tasks that require human visual activities, such as measuring, counting, and visual checking. When equipped with precise machine vision system, a machine will be able to perform parts measurements up to micro or even nanometer accuracies under surface specific tolerance. It can also detect object surface cosmetic effect or even hidden defects when combined with hyperspectral imaging system. It can also check for missing parts, extra parts at a very high speed. More importantly, vision system can do real time decoding, such as decode the character, such as optical uh, character recognitions, barcode, QR code, and other types of industrial 2D, 2D data metrics. Machine vision, when combined with robotic system, can also perform locating by calculating object position, orientation, and shape in real time. And this particularly very useful in the beam picking industry. So this example picture so show that uh, a car fuse box inspections where machine vision is used to check for the missing fuse or wrong color fuse positions. Next is an example of photo showing the real time OCR scanning and barcode scanning in the food and beverage industries. So this picture shows an example of robotic arm beam picking where machine vision <coughs> sorry, where machine vision is used to locate the positions and orientation of the object so that the robotic arm can actually pick up the object accurately. And typically using some geometry, geometric pattern matching algorithms. Okay. So why machine vision is getting widely adopted in manufacturing line? So this is because machine vision can bring profitability increments to a business in long term. Machine vision inspection is contactless because it just uh, look at the object that determine parts of field. Thus, it can reduce the deliverable defects such uh, to prevent customer from receiving the bad parts, which may lead to costly uh, product recalls. Besides that, it can also increase production use and daily throughput. During the peak season, a machine vision system can actually work restlessly to inspect millions of parts per day. This certainly is a very huge advantage as compared to traditional labor force, which cannot work nonstop and may need to take shift. Decoding technology can be used to track the flow of the parts and products also, which help manufacturers to avoid Component, uh, component shortage, reduce inventory, and shorten their lead time. Consistency is also a main advantage of using machine vision, where every inspection is done based on the same setup and conform to industry gauge repeatability and reproducibility, GR and R standards. This consistency level is very hard to achieve by human being, as we human will tend to have bias uh, and affected by external environment factors. Furthermore, the machine vision can make the production line more scalable, copy and paste the production line to deal with sudden rush of demand, become very fast and easy, where machine parameters can be standardized easily across the production lines. Lastly, more business opportunities can come in more for manufacturers when they can configure their machine vision module flexibly uh, in this case, machine vision system, optics, and lighting module can be reconfigured easily to cater for different production demands. Next, there are five elements made up for uh, fundamental parts of machine vision system. First one is the object to be inspected. Object surface, material, reflect, uh, and reflectivity Customer pass fail requirement will need to be studied and taken into consideration before deploying a vision system. Second one is uh, illumination. Normally in a manufacturing line, machine vision is deployed in the control environment to achieve the best accuracy and repeatability. Thus, a good illumination setup can ensure that we get a very good contrast of the image features, different angle of the lighting and different can highlight different features on the final image captured. So does the color of the lighting. So this is another big topic. 
Third one is the camera, which is made out of camera sensors and camera lens. Industrial camera will be used in the machine vision system instead of a consumer camera because industrial camera often is more robust and have a very good heat dissipation capability to work restless for 24-7. Sensor size and lens properties can be configured easily to cater for different customer needs. For example, some customer may want higher feature resolution rather than inspection speed. Thus, the camera configuration with a very small field of view can be proposed, while some of the customer might need a higher throughput, but okay with a lower resolution. So camera configuration with a big field of, uh, big field of view can be proposed. Fourth one will be the processing unit. In this case, uh, industrial PC will be used, which is more robust. So inside the PC, there will be image processing software running in the background to perform a calculated decision making based on digital image captures. And finally, there's the robotic feedback system to perform an action to indicate uh, the particular object is has been passed or failed by our inspection system. So this is just a very simple illustration of a machine vision system. So what chemical reactions can occur when machine vision crash into industrial 4.0 ecosystem? Firstly, it will promote a smart factory by assisting in the lean manufacturing flow. This is done by maximizing the automation with minimal human interventions. It also aims for flexibility and scalability to adapt to the fast-paced technology advancement and new inspection requirements. Furthermore, it also provides the ability of real-time machine monitoring through the cloud system, uh, cloud computing, so you can always receive the latest status just in front of your laptop and mobile phone. Besides that, the big data generated from the machines can be pulled to the cloud for business intelligent analytics. Machine vision system in this case can act as an image collection hub for AI training in the future. On par with the smart factory revolutions, Vitrox had developed an industry 4.0 solution called V1. V1 is the big data analytic platform that collects the data from the cloud. User will be able to visualize the data in meaningful dimensions through the drill down chart and 3D chart, 2D chart, and able to provide customizable dashboard to let their end user to analyze their production data in real time basis. It also aims to drive the industry toward a highly customizable, customizable one-stop platform, which offers data-driven decisions in manufacturing process. It can also enable data feeding for AI processing in the future. So in the picture of the top right, you can see that even our company, the Vitrox system, even used the V1 to digitize our in-house operations and gain useful business insight from it to make our process more lean. This is one of the examples of the V1 usage in machine real-time status monitoring. In this context, you can see there are many machines connected to our V1 cloud, and the machine real-time status is viewable from the machine detail dashboard. And what details want to be viewed by the user actually can be customizable in the dashboard. Furthermore, machines in the production floor is now uh, longer, no longer a single and independent entity. Multiple machines can actually work together, cooperate together effectively under one big ecosystem via machine to machine communications. Those machines are linked through the internet or intranet. Users can perform one-stop software updates and machine recipe tuning, AI model deployment, and performance uh, monitoring through one machine and proliferate to every other machine in no time. Besides that, with machine conformant to industry sex gen protocol, 
uh, this is type of, a type of equipment host data communication standards. Multiple machines can actually adapt to users in house process in a very short period of time. For example, the one uh, command from the IT server of the customer can actually take effect instantly on every machine through the section protocol without uh, we need to rewrite any custom process or algorithm to cater for their in-house process. So a smart factories can consider smart without the machine learning capabilities. In the real world, fabrication process often fast changing due to material shortage, change of a vendor, equipment aging, etc. So unforeseen defects or product surface characteristic may appear throughout the manufacturing process, which may cause underkill or overkill when going through the machine vision inspection. Unlike measurement, which is calculated from one edge point to the other edge point, cosmetic defect when appear together with a noisy background or residue may be very hard to detect using traditional feature extraction methods. Development of custom algo is time consuming and doesn't guarantee to cover all the cases. It also has a risk of overprocessing, which will take a toll on the machine cycle time. So supervised deep learning could be useful in this case to differentiate the defects in a very short period of time and getting better from time to time through the learning from vast amount of real world data. Here is an example where we can resort to the help of a deep learning in solving industrial problem. Recently, we got a project of a dye surface microcat inspection. So for your info, dye is a small block of semiconducting material on which a given functional circuit is fabricated. It's often rectangular in shape and it's very small. During the fabrication process, the micro, a micro crack may be occurs and need to be filtered out. So in this case, you can see that when finishing the die, customer will apply a grinding process onto the surface of the die. Thus, you can see there's a, a multiple grinding line appear in the background along with the crack uh, on the image. Thus, the special handling will need to be applied to differentiate the crack from the background grinding lines. So particularly we are using a Fourier transform method okay, to change the image to frequency domain and try to filter out the angles in the frequency domain before invert it back to the uh, image domain. So after the grinding line filter apply, you can see the result is as the uh, uh, right side pictures where the grading lines disappear and left over only the uh, crack lines. So we'll use a contrast algorithm to actually catch the crack line. Here's some example of our preliminary studies. You can see that we're able to differentiate the cracks from the lines, and we are so happy with it. And given uh, it takes uh, some challenge to the traditional image processing, which is the uh, grinding line angle may vary, and grinding line contrast and depth may vary. Given that we are using the same camera uh, depth, same focus level, yeah, then it will be appear like this: different angle, different uh, focus. But the same thing is there are still grinding lines. So when we try to deploy to the productions, the real production, uh, real challenge come. Okay, everything seems okay until we meet this the multiple grinding lines. It is uh, very hard to tune our algorithm to automatically retrieve multiple angles. Where you can see some multiple angles actually is uh, it's not so obvious. Some is very obvious, some is not so obvious. So from the customer feedback, there may be also three to four angles of grinding lines in within one die surface. Wow, this is certainly very challenging. So after that, we try to approach uh, our AI engineers to see whether we can actually tackle this problem 
uh, from AI perspective. So firstly, by using, he, he proposed a method by using segmentation-based deep learning approach. Yeah, we try to fit, uh, we try to fit our customers' image data into the AI training program. And we try to label the crack lines ourselves and let it learn the model by itself. And then after a few days of learning, the result came out. Yeah, the, you can see at the left hand side, the multiple grading line actually we able to pass it. There is no defect found. So at the left hand side actually is, uh, is our uh, good inspection result. Nonetheless, uh, at the right hand side, we can find out that there is also some overkill when inspect using the AI model. You can see there is some overkill on the image edge and some overkill on the uh, very deep line on the same direction line of the grading line. So this method actually uh, is not so good as com uh, as, uh, as expected by us. Then we have, after several discussion, we have uh, given an alternative proposal to customer where we use deep learning methods to estimate angles of grinding lines exist in the die surface. Instead of, we use the segmentation deep learning to actually extract the lines. So we hope that uh, by using this method, we are able to estimate the angle of grading line exists in the die surface uh, easily. Then we can use our previous traditional algo to filter the grading line, then extract possible crack through our in-house contrast algo. So basically this uh, experiment is still ongoing and we still don't have any result on it. But we do hope that this can actually help our customer to solve their problem and make sure their uh, overkill rate is uh, their yield is actually more than 90 uh, 98 percent okay so the global machine vision market from 2022 and 2020, 2026 the market is grow at a very fast pace of 13.76 percent and their markets in uh, dollars have been rise from 10 uh, from 2021 to 2026 in around 10.19 billion dollars so for vitros we only actually tap a very small semiconductor market of global machine visions and there's so much so much things that can be applied and enhanced by using machine visions uh, such as uh, agriculture, automotive, automotive is like the Tesla. Uh, nowadays, they try to do autonomous driving, consumer product packaging, logistic and warehousing, uh, food beverage, medical imaging, security, surveillance, aerospace, military, virtual reality, and even entertainment movie industries. Okay, so I think that's all for my presentations and hope you all enjoy it. Now I pass the floor back to Dr. Wong. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. X. Now uh, it's a very insightful uh, sharing. Now we understand more how uh, smart vision is actually deployed in the industry and also some of the uh, how effective it is and also the challenges that it faced. So um, next, maybe I'd like to see if there's any questions from the floor. Okay, maybe I ask my question first. So as we know that smart vision and AI plays a significant role in the industry for context, right? Becoming, uh, like Mr. A said, the eyes of the manufacturing process. All right, and cameras and vision sensors are getting smaller and more affordable, all right, which is actually leading to the higher adoption rates of this smart vision technology, all right, either uh, used in combination with robotics or in IOTs and so on. Now, uh, 
with the ability for the you know smart vision, for example, to be able to inspect millions of parts a day, which is probably not possible by a human, and uh has highlighted by Mr. Ace that uh, machine vision has actually the capability to improve productivity, productivity and increase profitability. So I'm wondering uh, how good is the adoption rate in Malaysia, all right, in the manufacturing context in Malaysia? We know that Vidros actually has a lot of international customers. So uh, how actually uh, is the adoption rate of the IoT project seat? I mean, of, of the smart vision in Malaysia context. Okay, so we actually have also many local customers such as uh, Inari, Infineon, Unisem, and others. So these are quite quite a big semiconductor players in Malaysia. And meanwhile, uh, which was also uh, co uh, cooperate with other uh, local companies to establish a project called Penang Automation Clusters, okay, where they try to uh, they try to build an ecosystem around the industrial area uh, by uh, teaching the uh, and SME to utilize the uh, Vitrox V1 solutions to enhance their in-house process. So there are actually uh, a lot of uh, small SME around around our companies which is situated around our company, they are using our solutions to actually adopt to the uh, uh, to adopt to the industrial 4.0 standards. I see, that's uh, really interesting to know that the local manufacturing industry is also, you know, uh, adopting the uh, smart vision into their manufacturing process. And we hope that we all right, uh, this adoption will actually be wider, all right, and help to improve, all right, the uh, advancement in uh, Malaysia itself, all right, in the technology itself. Um, maybe next, I would like to direct a question uh, to Dr. Law. Uh, so your research is very much into the uh, low-level image enhancement. I'm aware that you are even the creator of a all right, one of the main data set, all right, called SDAT in, you know, a data set that is used by even researchers around the world for uh, low light enhancement um, kind of research. So um, how do you foresee, we know that this technology will be very useful in, you know, improving uh, smart vision tasks like um, the autonomous uh, driving scene understanding, all right, object detection and so on. So now, how do you think this low light enhancement technology could also be useful in specifically uh, smart manufacturing, like for example, in tasks like defect detection or like the tasks like just now the crack detection and so on. Maybe you can share with us some of your insights, Sudhi. Uh, thank you, Dr. Wong. So from my opinion, based on what uh, Mr. Lau shared earlier, there's this uh, setup in the production line there where you need to have very good illumination on the inspection. So because that can actually confuse the system very easily regarding whether it's a defect or is it a shadow and so on. So from what I foresee that uh, if we have some sort of enhancement, especially this type of uh, let's say shadow removal, uh, illumination adjustment automated ones that could actually even reduce the uh, setup the cost to actually have to start illumination setup and this because it might have a potential to actually be more uh, deployable to many different uh, scenarios it makes it more uh, easier to adapt different systems to different conditions Okay, thanks, uh, Dr. Law. So, yeah, we can see that low light enhancement would all right, be also very useful in uh, various, uh, you know, applications of smart manufacturing. Okay, um, so my next question, any questions from the floor? Let me chat. Um, okay, so another question is that um, a more technical question, uh, for the uh for Mr. Ace. So uh you have given some 
all right, a couple of examples of how deep learning is being deployed in the smart manufacturing and have been shown to give some, uh, you know, uh, good uh, results and promising results, but there are still quite a number of challenges to be overcome. Hmm. Um, and we know that deep learning is the buzzword of AI now has, uh, in research, is shown to actually improve a lot of uh, uh performance in a lot of tasks but we know that uh, deep learning also has uh, the inherent limitation of its generalization ability and it very much depends on the data that is used to train the model so we are aware that in the manufacturing process despite that you know we have a defect uh, problem for example uh, to defect detection problem so uh, how can or how does uh, the industry actually address the problem of this generalization ability? So I believe you probably need to train each model uh, with a different data set. And also even more interesting is that how you actually maintain uh, or deploy the, uh, you know, consistently improve and deploy the uh, improved model. I noticed that in one of the pipeline you did not uh, mentioned that you have a deep uh, deployment and monitoring process maybe you can give a bit of detail how you the industry actually uh, address this generalization uh, limitation as well as how uh, it can be continuously improved all right the model in terms of the deployment over to okay. you uh, thank you dr wong so in order to address uh, this problem Actually, uh, we can only try to learn from best amount of uh, data and that the data generalization problems for our case, we try to learn the modern ba uh, model based on, uh, how to say, it's a lighting basis, okay? So this model cater uh, for this lighting setup because this lighting setup actually can highlight certain features that we want. So we actually collect many, many images from this particular lighting setup and we train the model and collect another lighting setup and we train the model. So uh, in the production uh, floor, we can actually uh, use the C++ program to deploy the program, uh, to deploy the model and uh, run run the model in the production line. Okay. So uh, I don't know, I don't know whether this uh, address your problem. Uh, sorry, hi, Mr. Lam. Can ah, I yes. uh, have further questions on that? Huh? Ah, yeah. Uh, just to know when you mentioned about different lighting systems and then all the recollection and all that. Huh? Mm. Uh, typically, how, how much effort has been put into this type of uh, collection huh, in, in the industry? How much effort? Uh, if you want to measure, so before we actually deploy the system, customer will actually uh, give give a time frame such as a, a one month to buy off the whole systems. So during the buy off process, they actually will uh, try to give us as many samples as they can, but it's dummy. It's a dummy samples. So using that dummy sample, we actually try to set up the best recipe that we can and then try to train the model uh, so as uh, as good as we can to conform to their uh, product because uh, in some times their final products may also be change changing may not be the same as their previous same samples so this one will need to be uh, observed and recalibrate within that one month by off process okay Uh, thank you, Mr. Angus. Uh, we ask Lau for your uh, insightful, uh, you know, uh, response to the questions. We do have one question from the uh, audience. Uh, can you please brief the application of machine vision for precision farming, or specifically agriculture uh, applications? This is actually from Dr. V. Siva Raman from India. So we have actually an audience from India. Oh, okay. Thank you for your questions. 
uh, I'm I'm not the engineers of a precision farming, but I will try to uh, answer you to my understanding. So, uh, in my knowledge, they did use uh, multiple vision sensors to actually uh, calculate the so so called what uh, vegetation index of the crop. Okay, to determine whether the uh, the crop actually is a good conditions, they be that one they can use uh, vision sensors. Uh, they can use a color camera or they can use a hyper spectral cameras and then they can also use uh, many different type of uh, sensors to actually uh, to actually inspect the fertilization of the soil but that one we can inspect using uh, using a contact sensors I think it's not camera sensors yeah and then uh, this is on a small basis. Uh, on a large scale basis, when the uh, when the vision system actually is uh, installed on the uh, UAV uh, drone, it can actually uh, monitor the crops in a very large area scale basis. It can do uh, it can do some crop mapping, uh, segmentations, and also uh, help scanning on a daily basis. So. I think this uh, machine vision uh, in agricultural areas is actually uh, will actually help will actually help a lot in these agricultural areas. Yeah. Okay. Uh, thank you, uh, Mister Isno. So um, next, I have one more questions. Uh, actually, uh, for both of you. So um. We know that uh, currently, like for example, uh, uh, Midros is already also going into autonomous vehicles, right, from the presentation just now. So we know that uh, in the existing self-driving cars, right, um, LiDAR cameras are actually used in conjunction with uh, video cameras for scene understanding, all right, to specifically address the limitation of uh, not just undesirable light condition, but also in terms of 3D perception. Right, because we know that it, for 2D cameras, it can it not right, it may not have very accurate uh, 3D perception, and that would actually be a problem in terms of depth estimation. Uh, and it's very crucial, all right, for the safety of using uh, the autonomous or self driving vehicles. So, we are also aware that current research in computer vision is actually actively investigating into methods for low light enhancement as well as 3D scene understanding using uh, you know, standard 2D video cameras. Now, do you foresee that uh, video camera, using video cameras itself can actually uh, be used for 3D understanding without the support of LiDAR camera in the near future? Maybe uh, Dr. Law, you can you would like to answer this first? Oh, okay, thank you. Uh, in my opinion, that uh, based on the ex uh, research work that I'm doing, that it is possible to do 3D understanding uh, in undesirable conditions, but uh, in the near future, that is not exactly like a direct replacement of uh, the LiDAR camera because for those laser sensing, they are very precise. Is that the issue right now is of course the costing of lidar cameras and so on that is not very practical for mass production for in terms of uh, normal light cameras using this sort of enhancement there's a potential for 3d information to be extracted provided we can uh, further process those undesirable conditions okay okay i i think the main challenge of uh, using uh, normal camera as compared to LiDAR is actually the unfavorable ambient lighting conditions. Yeah, so if you're using, you are using LiDAR, the LiDAR is workable either on a rainy day, cloudy day, or even at night time. But if you're using normal camera, yeah, when it is uh, raining, cloudy, or snowing, yeah, there will be uh, quite a lot of challenge. Uh, and I think I think yeah, I think tes Tesla owner actually they tried to uh, abandon the lidar sensors and use fully the 
uh, cameras, uh, surrounding camera system on their autonomous vehicles. And they believe that uh, actually machine learning can actually help to uh, cover all the problem, all the en uh, environmental problems. Yeah. Okay, that's interesting to know. In fact, there's already, um, you know, the, like for example, the Tesla is actually looking into, you know, just uh, using the video cameras and it seems right. like it's probably, all right, not in the near future, but maybe in a more distant future, it is indeed possible, all right, to just use probably a simple video camera for the advanced AI test. Right, so that's uh, really quite uh, interesting. Yeah, and I think on top of that, you mentioned also in addition to uh, the limitation of, you know, 3D scene understanding as well as the low light, there are also other issues like weather condition, right? Um, in terms of, you know, if it's rains, if it's snow and all those. And I, um, I'm also aware, in fact, there are also technologies or research actually looking into how to remove rain, remove snow, or even actually change the weather condition. Like, for example, because we know that in the snowing condition or raining is uh, actually, you know, the, 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 the environment may not help in tasks, uh, uh, in, in tasks like object detection and scene understanding. So actually research that actually attempt to change the scene from a, let's say, for example, a snowing or raining scene to, you know, a bright sunny scene to improve uh, the scene understanding. So those are some interesting research could also possibly support, you know, the uh, improving the scene understanding with just the standard video cameras. Okay, um, we don't have questions from the floor. Um, so uh, maybe just one last uh, question, all right? Uh, I think this question is probably more for Dr. Law. Um, in terms of the data, right, we know that uh, you have highlighted that data is one of the limiting factors in the current training of the AI model. And there are actually a lot of research that look into augmenting the data or even synthesizing the data, right? Like, for example, look like images, right? It's sometimes difficult to get. Uh, and you know, synthesizing will actually help to collect much more data, right, that would potentially improve the performance of various vision tasks. So how uh, challenging is it to actually synthesize you know, those uh, data to mimic the real world data? And how far do you think it is effective in actually supporting vision tasks? All right? um, maybe you can give us some insights into this, as I know you are also very much into, you know, uh, image synthesis okay uh so uh yes so image synthesis is actually one of the ways to overcome the data problem because uh quite often uh the impression that we want to do smart systems we want to use uh, ai neural networks and so on we need data we need to keep collecting data so if you don't overcome these sort of problems then uh that's the main limiting factor there so when it comes to challenging uh, conditions, so that's not often we have the allocation for that our data. So synthesis current technologies, I think many might have heard, like for example, uh, neural networks to generate video, to generate artwork, to generate images from just data. So uh, the performance now in research work is actually pretty good. It's pretty realistic in order to generate general images or even images of objects. So we can actually leverage on this type of technology in order to support our practical systems because those uh, detection or assessment, those are computer vision, smart vision systems, they require training data. So if you are able to generate uh, virtually unlimited amount of data from using another technology, that can actually support the task that we have. So given limited samples of data, then we try to estimate, interpolate and synthesize from the any data, small data that we have, and then virtually have unlimited amount that we want. 
So that is part of one of the research what I've been doing, and there is the potential that synthetic data like this, generating a data essentially from nothing into samples, is possible to support this very data hungry type of uh, models there. So I, I see a potential there that in the future that we may be able to at least overcome partially the this bottleneck of having data itself. Thanks, Sotona. So yeah, we foresee that probably in the future to address this uh, you know, uh, data hungry deep learning network where it which requires the right large amount of data to ensure the good performance data image synthesis is one of the potential kind of research that could actually help solve this problem. Uh, Mr. Is, how do you think that image synthesis, all right, uh, could actually also be, you know, uh, able to support smart vision tasks in manufacturing or is it already deployed or being used in, uh, you know, smart vision currently or not as much as it's being uh, actively researched? Uh, from my knowledge, I I think I I don't see any uh any image image synthesis uh ah, yeah I think got image synthesis actually is uh, related to the data augmentation right ah yes correct yeah, yeah right yeah yeah, yeah, so, yeah I mean it's one uh it's one aspect of data augmentation yeah yeah, yeah. Mm. so uh in our case I have seen that uh when we deploy a uh, AI OCR AI OCR then we will need we will need many uh real uh, real life examples. We train by using seventy four k for character image, and we try to get some production image from our previous customer to learn the uh, character the markings, and then uh, our AI engineer also uh, do some data augmentations by uh, putting some uh, salt and pepper noise or residues. Ah, uh, yeah. Generate it randomly on around the characters to make the character uh as not readable by machine as possible. Then try to train train them to recognize the characters. So I think the result comes out very well. Yeah, it can actually uh bypass the residues, uh some production noise or the uh inspection object surface reflectance, and it can actually guess the uh character correctly by using this data augmentation methods. Yeah, actually can help to improve uh, improve the capability of our AI OCLs. Okay, that's yeah. really interesting to know. All right, I mean, mm. uh, this where you actually synthesize some kind of the fat noise and all those, and mm. in turn it actually help uh, with the process. I believe that is also uh, that's particularly useful because sometimes the fats is not the 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 data size of the fat data is not as large as normal data, right? So mm -hmm. that's why the synthesis is actually uh particularly useful so uh maybe one last chat on the audience we didn't have any questions from the audience um we are near to the end of the insights of the uh this se uh, high session so uh maybe before we close the session i'd like to invite um you know uh, mr Isla, do you have any last uh, uh message that you want to share with the audience uh, last message, yeah. Uh, um, to the audience, uh, yeah, machine visions, uh, computer visions, image processing actually is a uh, quite interesting field. Uh, interesting fields, uh, in the recent decades, and actually can create many many, uh, business opportunities, research opportunities, that can actually gain uh, a lot of insights and sparks. So, so yeah, you you are very welcome to uh to join the doc. Uh, I think Doctor Wong have established a faculty of uh, vis uh visual computing, right? The center for visual. Yeah, computing. center of visual computing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, very very welcome to join into the faculties. Uh, yeah, and so welcome to join Vitrox. Yeah, we also they provide the machine vision training. <laughs> 
Thank you, Mr. Ace. Yeah, I think you see, if you have uh, seen the slides from uh, Mr. Ace just now, we, uh, Vitros has a very impressive uh, campus. All right, I was there in the older campus. It's really very impressive. In fact, it's, in fact, it's a award-winning architecture. All right, and I think the new one is even more impressive and they have very good uh, facilities. And the way that Vitros is also kind of setting up some kind of uh, training center to actually uh, upskills the employee or even provide training to the employee so i think to our employee i mean to our students undergrad postgrad or even the alumni out there all right we is this probably one of uh, all right uh, yeah. desirable uh, option all right for future employment okay yeah. thank you I, I uh, yeah wonder, maybe you want to share something yeah, they say the uh, virtual brand tour video yeah. Okay, sure. You, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Maybe okay, I will, yeah, I'll you pass now. to you. You can share the video. So that is our uh, virtual frontal videos. So shall you have uh, any questions or uh, if you want to know more about Vitrox or know more about me, you can actually contact me via my email, zwilao at uh, vitrox.com. Okay. If you want to know more about the uh, Vitrox, you can also log on to the links at the left-hand side. Okay, thank you uh, very much, uh, Mr. It's now, and it is a very impressive plan tour. All right, I, I also look forward to visit the new yeah, sure, <laughs> the, sure, sure. Uh, <laughs> campus. Okay, mm -hmm. so uh, next, uh, maybe I uh, pass the floor to Dr. Law. Maybe you have uh, uh, some point for takeaway for the audience today. Uh, okay, thank you, Dr. Wong. So, uh, Thank you, everyone, for your time today and your attention, and Mr. Lau for sharing a bit of industry applications of this research work. So uh, there might be those who might think that vision work is still is very saturated, where many big companies already done it, and you might think that there's not much else to do. But actually, in fact, 
uh, practical-wise, research-wise, there are still many problems yet to be solved. So for those who are interested, just uh, feel free to try it out, have a bit of uh, investigations and so on, because we are still quite far away from the very realistic situations in our real world. The modeling part, despite being very impressive, there are still many situations to handle and we are looking for, let's say, talents, those who are interested to actually work in this type of area. So I uh, hope that it has been uh, interesting for all of you and uh, thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much. So, um, so as we know, data plays all right, a very important uh, role in today's uh, uh, technology, all right, especially in smart vision. And uh, thank you, all right, specifically to Dr. Lo and uh, Mr. Ace for sharing their, all right, uh, deep knowledge and insight into how, all right, our smart vision can be deployed, all right, into uh, helping, all right, or make it uh, for advancing the industrial for revolution. So in order to nurture a pool of competent workforce, especially in data as required by the industry, all right, we know that now institutes of higher education, including MMU, is all right, working very closely with the industry to find you our programs, uh, our courses and our syllabus to ensure all right, that they are always updated to, be, uh, rep to the rapidly changing market needs. So um, to conclude this uh, webinar, I would like to first Thank uh, Mr. X Lauzevi and Dr. Loy Wenping for sparing their very valuable time, all right, effort to prepare for this talk as well as their insightful sharing of knowledge and insights. And we also like to thank the organization organizer of this seminar, uh, the Industrial Collaborations and Engagement Center, ICEC, as well as the core organizer, the Faculty of uh, Computing and Informatics. MMU Studio, Strategic Marketing Department under uh, Strategic Marketing Admission and Recruitment Smart Division, and the technical support team for making this insightful seminar conducted smoothly. And last but not least, all right, this webinar could not be of uh, successful or of good value if we don't have the audience. So thank you very much for your time, all right, uh, to participate in this webinar. Everyone, of us, Take good care. All right, and stay safe. Have a nice day and see you again. Thank you very much. Bye.